Hey everyone, welcome to Mark's 900. I'm Mark and today we're going to talk about mods. Now, I'm not talking about that kind of mod. Obviously, this is motorcycle modifications. Although you can't help but appreciate the old Vespas and Lambrettas of old. Now, I'm going to go through the bike front to back, talk about all the things that I've done. I consider them to be fairly entry level changes that I've made to the bike. You don't need anything more than a spanner, a screwdriver, and maybe an Allen key to do any of this stuff. So, Let's start then, starting at the front, but to do that, I need to be behind the camera. We have got the radiator guard. Now this is a really cheap one that I bought off eBay. It was somewhere between 30 and 40 pounds. Um, I know that the Kawasaki one's a lot more money than this. Now, it's a, a little bit tricky to fit in that you have to take all these side panels off and they come off easy enough, but getting them back on is a bit of a tricky job. Now, once it's all on, um, what I found is there's absolutely no rust no vibrations, nothing, and this particular model of radiator guard fits anything from 2017 onwards, so it fits both the new models of the Z900. So um, I would definitely recommend the cheap option for that one. Now, moving up the bike, the second modification you can barely see, because what I've done is I put a USB um, charging point, which is here, hidden, in amongst the wires so in there is my USB charging point now I've done it like that with a, a thing called a USB tender and it's just zip tied onto the cables that sit back there now a USB tender just gives power to the device that you're charging when it needs it so if it's at a hundred percent it stops charging it's only a single port but to be fair that's all I need and and the alternative to that was one of these great big chunky things that sits on your handlebar with these wires hanging out the back and quite honestly I hate anything that's hanging off my handlebars. <clears throat> so for me, that charging point tucked away there, out of view, is absolutely perfect. So one thing I didn't mention there was that the um, USB tender, so the port, is uh, around somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds. Off the back of that, you have this SBA lead. That's a couple of quid. So the whole thing was done for less than 20 pounds to add that USB charger. Um, other things I've got going on with the handlebars is obviously this very, very cheap and nasty phone holder. It cost me less than £15 on eBay and it's made by Greyfly. Uh, it does the job. I've, I've been using that for about a year or so. I haven't dropped a phone yet. Uh, it's spring loaded and it locks in place. So, you know, it does the job. It's also very easy to take off and I've only really put that on just to show it on there. I only use it if I'm going off on a tour or I need my sat nav or whatever. So generally, I don't have anything at all on my handlebars. Um, as we move around then, we've got the bar end mirrors. Now these are one of the more interesting topics. I might even have to do some sort of uh, video on this just on its own. So when you take the bar ends off, what you're left with is a dome with a thread, eight millimeter thread through the middle. Now you can't just put a mirror against that dome because it won't hold in place. So you need an adapter, which is this part here. And these adapters are available from a company called Highsider, which is a German company, and there's a couple of UK resellers. Or you can go to um, SP Engineering, who also sell uh, an adapter now, which I didn't know about at the time. It's, it's a little bit cheaper as well. So that's what you need is the adapter and the mirrors. The mirrors say between 10 and 15 pounds, and the adapter was about 15 pounds. Um, so a nice job there. there. There are more expensive options than you, you know, you can spend as much as you like on mirrors. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, these are just cheap and breakable and they do the job. Right, one of the other things to note here is that when I took the wing mirrors off, I was left with a hole there where the original screwed in and over there. So I uh, bought these two screws that fit into those holes and then put a rubber washer underneath so that you could line up the screw heads. So a nice easy job, didn't cost too much. Moving down to the side of the bike, I've got the um, RNG crash bungs. Now you could go cheaper than that, but I wouldn't do. Uh, I just went for the best ones I could find, and as far as I'm aware, RNG sort of set the standard for that sort of thing. Um, I've gone for the, the kind of thing that's gonna protect the bike if it falls over. Now you can buy full on engine sliders and frame sliders and all that kind of stuff. This adds a lot more money, and I just figured if I'm gonna go sliding down the road at my age, it's gonna be a while before I get back on the bike. So I'm quite happy with something that will just help me with um, if I drop the bike. Uh, I think that's enough for what I need. Moving back further again, we've got the um, heel kick plates. Now there's a whole 
video that I've done on these because that was a surprisingly difficult thing to do because I tried to spray the first ones matte black because they come uh, sort of brushed aluminium uh, stock but I, I bought a pair of these of £20 real heavy duty things you can really give them a good kick in and they just stay in really nice looking nick like that and I think it blends with the bike a lot better. So looking at the back of the bike then um, the first thing is I've got these bobbins that I've installed uh, they're quite small ones and I had to make an adjustment to my paddock stand because the forks on the paddock stand were too long and they were scraping into the swing arm so uh, they had to be cut down but apart from that the actual installation of the, of the bobbins is uh, very very simple. So moving further up I've got a tail tidy this one is a JTEC tail tidy I'm not really that happy with it I don't feel like it fits quite snugly enough into the into the tail of the bike it hangs down too far uh, it was very difficult to get the indicators um, fixed in because they have to be squeezed through this um, this metal part here it's really difficult and it comes with a load of sharp metal on this particular product which needed to be filed down so that was a real pain and then I've got the rear light which is three LEDs and they were shining backwards just too bright they light up the plate but they also lit up the car behind me um, so I had to put this plastic uh, plastic flap which I've just stuck onto the tail tidy it's not ideal it's not particularly neat um, and if I had my time again I'd probably spend a bit more money and go with like an R RNG or something like that so um, further down we've got the good old SP engineering exhaust pipe which I'm absolutely delighted with I think that looks uh, a dream on this bike so here's an interesting one to show you um, Underneath the pillion seat, we've got a USB charging point, which I've put in. This is a Kawasaki one, so it comes in at about 65 to 70 pounds. Um, it's got a single charging port on the front, and um, it hooks into the um, into a, a spare socket that sits under there. That's just six bolts that undoes the back part and it slides off. So it's easy enough to install, but it is quite expensive. And if I'm honest, since I got the USB charger on the handlebars, I've not actually used it at all. And it does get in the way because I can't even fit a phone into that area now so um, I've got a feeling that that one's going to be coming back out and since I've bought that I've also noticed that there is um, a much cheaper version um, which is a non Kawasaki one it's about 30 pounds and it comes with two slots for charging so that to me is a much better deal uh, and would be the one I would go with if I was doing it again and the final thing to see then is the tank pad which is designed for a Z900 but it's still quite cheap uh, looks the business uh, no, no issues with that the only problem I've got is that my jacket is wearing a slight hole in the paint there it's only very slight but before it gets any worse I'm just experimenting with some plastic uh, to see if I can stop that from getting any worse moving up the bike there were a couple of stickers one of which told you the type of fuel to use which I've moved to at the top there and the other one uh, was a, a thing that told you to go off and read the instruction manual so um, I've removed that one altogether I just think that gives the, the tank a much cleaner look. So apart from that then, um, well that's it, that's my Z900.